So I am currently working on installing a custom car audio system into a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I've got the amplifiers and DSP installed, I've made custom speaker adapters, and I've built and installed custom sail panels for the tweeters. Now I still need to do custom A-pillar speakers, I need to do the rear door speakers, and I need to do subwoofers. What is the gear that I'm using for those locations? This build is meant to be musical and well-balanced. What sets these high-end speakers and subwoofers subwoofers apart. My friends, let's do an overview video on this gear and take a closer look. I want to start with focusing on these guys right here. These are the three inch mid-range speakers that are part of a three-way set for the K2 power series from Focal. These are more of a high-end speaker made in France. If we open up this little package here, we'll see the three inch mid-range. This is going to pair with that six inch speaker that I have in the doors along with the tweeter that is in the front sail panel. These are gonna be ultimately going in the A pillar of the vehicle. We get out of its protective wrapping here. One of the first things that you'll probably notice that is characteristic of these K2 speakers from Focal is this yellow Kevlar cone. We get a nice close up here. You can see that it's a woven type material. It has a little bit of a glossy feel to it. It kind of reflects the light. The idea behind this material is it's incredibly light but rigid, which allows for excellent damping of the speaker. The idea here is more control and hearing what the speaker is meant to reproduce and not hearing unwanted resonance. We'll take a look at the backside here. And right now I'm reading directly from the website. This cone material is composed of an ultra light foam structure sandwiched between a thin layer of Kevlar Kevlar aramid fibers and a layer of glass fibers. Now another thing we want to look at and we have to look really close to see this, it's on the inside edge of this rubber surround. This is Focal's TMD surround which stands for tuned mass damper. This shape is definitely more prevalent on some of the larger speakers and according to Focal it controls unwanted resonance and helps provide a clean neutral mid-range with low harmonic distortion. Focusing our attention to the backside again of this mid-range, you can see we have a nice serial number on here, a nice kind of reflective sticker covering things up. And what I really want to point out is look at this custom tooled basket. If we kind of look at this shaping here, this is something that's carried throughout this series of speakers. It really has a nice solid kind of refined feel. If I rub my fingers against the edges, everything is really nice and smooth. There's no sort of flaws from the casting or machining process or anything like that. It really feels like a nice speaker. See on the side here, some spade style connections. One is obviously larger for the positive than the negative. Four mounting holes, that's simple enough. A nice shallow mounting depth, which is key for putting these in locations like the A-pillar, like I plan to. Overall, looks to be a really nice little three inch mid-range speaker. Now, what about the performance? Well, if we look at the frequency response curve for this speaker for both the on-axis and off-axis response here, we can see we have a nice flat response from about 110 hertz all the way to above 4,000 hertz or so, which is the point where you would transition and hand off to a tweeter anyhow. So some very nice performance there, and if these are anything like the six inch woofers that I have, along with the tweeters and the doors already, these will sound incredibly good. So we've got those. What the heck are these things here? So these, I believe they're actually included with the three-way set and I believe they can be purchased individually as well. This is a nice little solution. If you weren't planning on doing a bunch of custom modification, you can actually just mount this on the dash. And what this will do is it will hold the three-inch mid-range speaker just like so. And then you can also mount the tweeter in here. I've already mounted my tweeter in the vehicle, so I can't really show that. But then it also has this nice grill that will snap over the top of it once everything is mounted in place. You can see that this grill is made from a plastic type material. It has obviously grill fabric stretched over it, so you can really see the pattern through right now. But once it's over the speaker, everything is nice and dark and looks super clean. I think this is actually really cool. This is something that not many manufacturers really offer, and it really gives you a nice quick solution to have some excellent sound, especially with having a tweeter and a mid-range and then pairing it with a six inch woofer down in the doors. So speaking of the doors, let's move on to these guys right here. This is the K2 Power EC165K coaxial set of speakers. Now, since this is also part of the K2 lineup, you're gonna see many of the same features that I was just describing on that three inch mid-range. Again, of course, the yellow signature Kevlar cones, but since these do have a tweeter built in, we have a little bit more to talk about here. So the tweeter here in the center is 
also uniquely shaped. It's an inverted dome tweeter, and Focal actually calls it their M shape. Obviously, with this being a coaxial speaker, it's going to combine the woofer along with the tweeter so we have a full frequency range of coverage. But what that also means is if we look at the speaker leads here that connect, we only have one set of connections. And that's because the crossover for that tweeter is actually built in and sits inside of the speaker. Nice little piece of protective covering here. Let's take this off and take a look underneath. Really nice machining if you look closely at that and the reflection. Again, this frame has that same signature look as what we saw on the three inch mid-range speakers. The finish of everything, once again, feels super nice, very refined. The mounting depth of this speaker is what I would consider to be pretty much average, maybe even a little bit deeper than most. It looks to be about two and seven eighths, almost three inches mounting depth. So you're definitely gonna need some clearance in your doors. There is one thing I'm not a huge fan of though, and that's if you see this rubber band kind of going around, the intentions and the point of that rubber band is to kind of hold this wire in place. I think it would have been cool if they would have had a little hole kind of designed into the actual basket of this speaker that the wire could have passed through to kind of hold it there, but nevertheless, it does seem to be a strong rubber band. I'm having trouble even really grabbing it, so I don't think it'd be an issue. And honestly, even if the rubber band were to break, this wire is short enough that I don't think it's gonna pose any sort of problem with running into anything else or rattling against anything. It seems to be kind of nicely formed to the side there. And obviously here at the end, it's held in by this sticker. Something else that's really cool that's worth noting with these speakers is if we kind of dig it out here, these speakers do come with speaker grills. Now I kind of know what you're thinking because I always think it when I see these speaker grills as well, how often do you actually really need to use these? For most installs, it's going behind a door panel. You're gonna keep the factory door panel, but the reason that I like that they're included is because of this mesh material that we can use for this project or even potentially elsewhere in the vehicle. So what I'm thinking about doing is when I mount these three inch mid-range speakers and the A pillars, I think I might actually custom form some of this mesh to protect them. I have a video all about custom molding metal mesh. You can check it out up in the corner of the screen. So even though you might not always use this for protecting the actual speaker in your install, it's kind of nice because maybe we could use it somewhere else in order to have a more cohesive build that matches. Now for our favorite category of speaker, the subwoofer. As you can see, I'm going with the P30F. This is a 12 inch subwoofer. A lot of people refer to this as the Flax lineup. I'll talk about that more in a second because of the cone, but Focal refers to this as their expert series subwoofer. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not going with the K2 subwoofer, these subwoofers are rated at about 400 watts. And since I'm going to have two of them, that's going to be perfect for my 800 watt RMS amplifier. The K2 series of subwoofers has a much higher rating that wasn't really needed. And ultimately I'm planning on using these in a as small of an enclosure as possible. So I wanted something that was a little bit smaller and trust me, these will still provide plenty of bump. So let's talk about this cone. This is definitely a unique looking material. It's called flax. It's made of several different fibers. And again, it's designed to be lightweight yet ultra stiff. What I think is extra unique about this cone is it's actually somewhat translucent. Now this isn't something that I'm going to be doing in my build, but I just think it's cool to note because I've seen several other people do it in their build. What they'll do is they'll actually put different LED lights inside of the subwoofer enclosure, and it really makes this subwoofer actually glow. So if you had some different color LED lights and you were going for more of a flashy install, that's kind of neat. The surround here is again a rubber material. It has a gasket that can be separated from the subwoofer itself and definitely gives more of a finished look. This subwoofer fits more into the mid-range price-wise of Focal's lineup. So you can see on the back here, it looks to be a stamped basket. And what's unique here is this is a single voice coil sub. So you can see that there is a push terminal on each side of the subwoofer. Dual magnet here, some cooling along the back side and in the center. The leads are integrated into the spider. And although we obviously can't see it, this has a two inch voice coil. What I like about this subwoofer is it's designed to sound good and it's designed to do so in a small airspace. If we take a look at the manual here, the recommended air volume for a sealed enclosure for a 12 inch sub starts at one cubic feet, which is very small for being a 12 inch. If we were to go down a size to the 10 inch subwoofers, it looks like their recommendation there is as small as 0.35 cubic feet. So you really don't need much air volume at all to get these performing. 
In fact, in a previous project, I built this custom subwoofer box. This used two of the 10 inch versions that are actually the shallow mount version. If you take a look at the top of the subwoofer enclosure here, the actual box itself is really only about six inches. I've got some extra stuff going on in front here to kind of protect the speakers, but to have a box that is only six inches deep, and then obviously the width of your trunk area, that is really nice. It leaves you a lot of storage room and you still get some great sounding bass. To give you guys an idea on how these perform, let's just do a little bit of a test listen really quick. I have these temporarily connected in the vehicle. exactly sure the configuration that I'm gonna have these in in my trunk in this build I don't know if I'm gonna do down firing up firing back firing still need to figure that out but I know no matter what I do I'm definitely gonna put these in a sealed enclosure we'll do something crazy design wise but I know I can count on them to sound good I need to get a custom subwoofer enclosure built I need to install the rear speakers and I need to make custom a pillars so if you guys want to catch those videos as part of this project I'd love to have you as a subscriber check out these videos that are part of this project here on screen. A special thanks to Anthony, Bernard, John, Brian, Thomas, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping make these videos possible. As always, my friends, don't forget to design, build, and install. I'll see you in the next video.